Welcome to the new decorating video from Robert Sorby. These beautifully decorated items were produced by guest presenter, renowned wood turning artist Nick Agar, using the original high quality, full size and micro spiralling and texturing tools from Robert Sorby. If you would like to produce your own version of Nick's stunning Viking sunset bowl or just decorate your own turn pieces, then watch this video to learn the various techniques that he uses. Hi, Nick Agar here and you're joining me at Robert Sorby headquarters in Sheffield, England, where today I'm going to share with you how we get even more from these wonderful spiralling and texturing tools. So I'm using the 3-8 spindle gouge. I'm just going to take a cut from the top, following down to the centre of the spindle, preparing the surface that we're going to texture. As it's cut so beautifully and shiny, I'm actually going to sand that a little bit so that I have an opaque background so that you can see the texture more clearly. That'll be fine. We're going to decorate this surface with a micro spiralling tool. I'm going to take off the attachment which allows us to fix the head at a given angle. I'm also going to use the optional longer handle um, as I prefer to have a little bit more to hold on to during this operation. I'm going to put the face that is beveled towards the wood and I've done it up with the little screw at the back against the flatter side of the wheel. This gives me a lot more space to work in without the nut getting in my way. Speed of the lathe is going to be set under 500 RPM. Starting in the centre, I'm going to pivot on, hold it there, count to five, I'm then going to move across in steps and I'm going to slowly open up the angle, tipping the wheel slightly further across as we make our way across. And you'll see it actually develops a little bit of a spiral across the surface. Just burnish off the surface there, take away some of those fuzzy torn grains. And now we have a spiral pattern created by the tool. We're going to now texture the surface again, only this time we're going to use all three of the available cutters. These two come initially with the kit and this is uh, the texturing wheel which is an available option. As before I'm going to have the lathe running at around 500 rpm I'm going to start with the smallest tooth cutter and just fractionally back away from the centre. The nut is loaded to the outside and I'm going to slowly pivot on and hopefully we'll get a beautiful tiny little delicate flower in the centre. Let's just have a look at that. There, fantastic. Now I'm going to move up to the slightly bigger teeth. You can see the difference here. Facing the wood about 45 degrees, pivot on to the outside of that design. Learning the pressure and the amount you have to push onto the wood is just a thing of practice and experience. But it is easy. And if you do make a mistake, it's only one or two cuts away from giving it another go. Now I'm going to use the smaller and double-sided texturing wheel to fill in this little area before I complete the job back again with this one on the outside. This time I'm going to be moving the tool backwards and forwards. So this is now beveled on both sides. Once more, the nut is out of my way making sure I've got room between the tool rest and the wood and I'm going to bring myself more in line with the timber surface and drag this backwards and forwards. This will give me more of an orange peel effect but by keeping the wheel more upright I don't damage the, the fibres of the wood. To complete the job in the same orientation I'm going to push this cutter in And again, burnish 
the surface with some shavings just to break off any fibres. Let's have a look at what we've got. Stunning. So you can imagine if you're making the lid of a box, a pendant, even perhaps uh, a table mat, then this is going to really ramp up the design opportunities you'll, you'll get with this tool. Now you can see by adding some colour, we've really enhanced the effect we've created with that mini spiralling tool. Moving on from the smaller version to the now larger version of the spiralling and texturing system, we have a greater variety of cutters available in pitches of 2, 4, 5, 6 and 11. Also the texturing cutter which is bevelled on both sides. I'm now going to use the 4mm cutter but I need to now remove the rest from the spiralling system return it to the sovereign handpiece and I've loaded the nut so that it's on the right hand side the flat side of the wheel the beveled side is going to be facing the wood now I've taken the rest off I've got more freedom to move the tool at different angles as I pass across the surface I've set the tool rest up so that we're on the center line of rotation and I've got plenty of room behind the tool rest so that I can rest my hand over the top and pivot onto the moving wood. I don't need to worry about my hand being close because in forward rotation the wheel is spinning away from my hand so I'm quite safe. Lathe speed, I run at around 1000 rpm for the bigger cutter and we're going to pivot in, not quite in the centre here. Hold it still and as I move across the face I'm going to slowly open up and change the angle backwards and forwards that the teeth are applied to the surface. So upright, slightly more over to the right, slightly more, back again and almost upright and facing the wood. This time, for a little more variety, I'm going to use these three cutters. The two, the four, and the texturing cutter. Starting in the centre, pivoting in with the tool upright. I need to slow the lathe down to around a thousand or below. Pivoting in just away from the centre. Hold. Now I'm going to move out. Give another pattern around that one. Back out again, returning to the upright position. I'm now going to move up to the number four cutter, with a slightly bigger pitch. Pivoting in, upright. Moving over. Further over still. Now to the texturing wheel. And importantly, this one needs to stay upright as it will tear the grain in the wood if I try operating it in the same way I just did with the previous cutter. So this one is presented face on and I'm going to move it backwards and forwards. And to finish off, I'm going to push straight on with the number four. Now with the addition of some colour, you can really see how strong that design is. Using the 4mm cutter again, I'm now going to present it to the wood in an upright position, but I'm going to bring it towards me whilst rotating and slowly open the cut up so that I produce a spiral. Once again, the speed of the lathe is below 1000 rpm. Hand over the top, pivoting in, until I get the pressure and then I draw towards me and I stop at the end. This time using the number five cutter I'm going to pivot from around about the two o'clock angle 
and moving across the wooden surface to an upright position, leaving a pattern. Now with the addition of some colour, you can really see how strong that design is. Let's decorate the bottom of a simple bowl now using all the tools in front of me. Starting off with the smallest cutter and I'm going to just do a little detail in the bottom of the foot of the bowl as if it would be the underneath, the piece you don't look at very often but it's important when you do look at it. Following up the side of the bowl, putting the tool at different angles and changing up the variety of cutters as we go in stages. So the first one at a lower speed of around 500 or below is going to be just a small detail on the underneath. Now we have to remember this time we have side grain and end grain in the direction of the wood hitting the surface of the cutter. So the end grain here and here, the side grain here and here. We can't therefore open up the tool too wide an angle because it will damage the grain more. So I'm going to suggest we go between upright and about two o'clock at the furthest rotation. Any movement facing the wood until we run out of an edge is appropriate. Hand over the top, pivoting in. Just give myself a small detail to outline the foot of the bowl. I'm now going to move to the larger pitch on the micro spiralling system and just on this shape of the foot push in carefully, slow the speed down a little bit more. It's a nice sharp edge. It sounds right, it sounds smooth, I know that's okay. Let's stop and have a quick look. You can see a nice floral pattern coming around the edge. I'm now going to use the bigger wheel and promote it at about one o'clock. Just outline in an upright position. Now I'm going to move up through the two, four, five and six cutters coming up the surface. First one, upright, led over about one o'clock and then two o'clock, outline where I've done with another upright to the number four, upright, one o'clock, two o'clock, outline it with an upright again, number five, upright, one o'clock, two o'clock, Outline it again and with this one I'm now going to present the tool facing the wood and levering from underneath press hard against the surface. Bit of a noisy job that one. Moving on to this top area of the bowl I'm now going to use the texturing cutter and I'm going to keep it adjacent to the shape but I'm going to move it up and down the surface, being careful not to fall off the edge. Just let it follow into its own footprints. Don't forget to burnish. Let's see how it looks. Now with the addition of some colour, you can really see how strong that design is. The original high quality full size and micro spiralling and texturing tools along with all Robert Sorby products are available from all main Robert Sorby dealers worldwide, a list of which can be found on our website. For more videos on a large selection of Robert Sorby products, go to our website or visit our YouTube channel.